Hi everybody, um, welcome to another installment of Conversations in Wire. I'm your host, James Browning. Um, I am a sales representative here for the Softflex company. Uh, we are a jewelry wire manufacturer based out of sunny Sonoma, California. And uh, we do have a gallery that we have open to the public every Wednesday and Thursday. And we would love to see you stop by. Um, Today, I'm going to be going over a project that I did while I was in Tucson uh, earlier this month. Um, it's going to be this little bangle bracelet, and um, it's a really, really simple wrap, and so I'll go over it again. Um, the reason I'm doing it again is because it was really popular. Lots of people really enjoyed the project, but uh, I know we had some quality issues of uh, the video while I was down there, so I want to make sure that this one's nice and clear. There's no other distractions, and we're just going nice and slow, step-by-step step to get it done. Um, I'm also going to change up a little of the components so that it will look a little different in case you did get to catch the one in Tucson. So um, let's go ahead and just get started. Okay, so um, today's supplies, we're going to need 22 gauge. We're going to need 18 gauge. Now for this project, I'm actually using two colors, lavender and silver, um, for our wrap wire. And then the 18 gauge is our base wire that's going to go through all of our beads to keep them on. So let's go ahead and get these out of the way. I'm also using these beads. These are a um, sediment jasper dyed. Um, I got these out of our owner's private collection that he has available for sale. Um, and I believe these are a 10 millimeter bead. Now the project that I did in Tucson, these are a titanium finished agate jersey and um, they are 8 millimeter. So it's a little smaller, a little bit more delicate, but I believe we should still be able to use the 22 gauge wire to go around this um, this 10 millimeter. So we shouldn't have to bump up the, the gauge too bad. If you go to a bigger bead or a smaller bead, then you would want to adjust the gauge accordingly. Let's get these out of the way. All right. Now, the wire that we need for our base does not need to be very big at all, um, since the base is actually going to be what's wrapping around your wrist. So I'm saying approximately 8 inches is plenty. We don't need to go any more than that unless you have a gigantic wrist or if you want to do this for a different project, like a necklace or something. So go ahead and cut that off. And as always, we're going to straighten our wire. I have a pair of chain nose pliers and a pair of nylon jaw tools. And remember to turn it 90 degrees so you can get the other side of those kinks. Now I know that there are people out there that don't find this a necessary step because the beads will cover up any of those kinks, but if you start nice and smooth, it makes the job easier, I believe. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a loop. I'm going to take my round nose tools Let's go ahead and do this as a, a wrap loop. So I'm going to come down about an inch maybe and just kind of bend this over and then move this up to the wider end and wrap it around. You know what? I did not make that long enough. Let's try that again. I always seem to have a hard time finding the amount of wire to section off when I'm doing a wrapped loop. But that is why we have these nylon jaw tools so that we can basically just start at square one again. All right, let's try going down to a full inch. Now this does kind of take off some of the um, 
area that you have to string your beads on, so keep that in mind. Alright, and I'm just going to wrap this around nice and tight. And the good thing about our soft flex wire is that it starts dead soft, so it's really easy to manipulate. It is a plated silver with a copper core, so that makes it really nice and easy to work with. And I'm just going to try and bring this end around and kind of squish it down so we don't have any pokey outy bits. In fact, this where I want it to be and actually just clip off that end there. It's always good to cover your wire when you are clipping because those little end pieces can fling and end up going places that you don't want it to go, like your eye. All right, and just kind of run your finger over that to make sure that there's nothing sticking out that is not good. Okay, now let's get our 22 gauge cut. So I'm using two colors today, but you can use one color if you want to make it like the bangle that I showed previously. And what I'm going to do is get a length of wire. I want to do it at least twice the amount of my base wire because we're going to double this up and we're going to wrap it around beads. So I try and give myself quite a bit of working room. I know if you're using precious metal wire, you really want to do be more conservative. Um, so uh, I would try and figure out exactly how much you want to use before you cut off. But with this wire, it is less expensive. So more is better because you can always cut off, but you can't add. And I'm just cutting two links the same side, or same size, I should say. All right. All right, so let's go ahead and straighten out these wires. I'm gonna do this off camera really quick because there's a lot of wire. One of the things about using uh, colored wire is you really want to be um, careful with the tools that you're using because it is not a full uh, core of that purple wire. The colored wire is generally uh, titanium coating or some other coating that's been baked on like an enamel. So, um, if you scratch the wire, you will be able to see the color underneath. Um, if you have problems with your tension still and you're just starting out, um, one of the things that you can do is get some tool magic, which we carry here at Softflex. It's, um, it's like a latex, a liquid latex that you can purchase. And um, you can dip your tools in there and that will help protect the wire when you're working. Uh, they also have nylon tipped tools, which I personally don't like uh, just because I can't seem to get a good grip with them, but I know people who have had success with them. So if you want to give them a try, you certainly couldn't. So what I did was I bent this in half, bent my two wires in half, and then I just made a little tiny loop and I threaded it onto the base wire. And I want to give it just one more wrap just to kind of secure it so it's not really going to go anywhere. And then the other thing I want to do is make sure that my wires are facing the right direction. So if I want silver on top, which I kind of do, I'm going to make sure that both wires are facing the right way. All right, and now for our first bead. Now, 
this does slide a little, so just be aware um, that your wires are going to move. This is just like um, the Sweet Pea project that I did previously, and you can find that video uh, probably in the links below, but it's also in our Softflex um, video library. So I'm taking the top wire and I'm going around the bead really close. Now, if you notice, I'm on top of the wire here. So our base wire is underneath our wrapping wires. So we don't want it to go like this. This is wrong. We want to be on top. And we're going to gently take our wires, snugging up our thing so our wire is going right around it. And then I'm going to go behind the base wire and out like that. So we just basically have a little halo, kind of, sort of. All right, and then I'm going to do the same thing with the bottom wire here. And I'm going over the base wire again, and I'm wrapping it around so that I have my wires back to on either side. All right now, if you noticed, my wires have kind of flipped, so I'm just going to try and be mindful of how my wires are moving, I'm trying to keep the wires the direction I want. Now I was asked previously if you could put the the wires or the beads on the wire first, um, and I prefer not to because I like to have space to move around. So you could technically put your beads on first, but I think they would fall off. Um, the cool thing about this wrap is that when you do it as a dual tone, your top wires will flip back and forth sometimes. So, I mean, you can be mindful and watch what you're doing, but it kind of gives it an interesting look. So feel free to play. That's what creation is all about. You don't have to follow my exact things here. I'm just giving you some techniques to work, and the rest is up to you. Now, I, as I'm putting on these beads, I'm kind of cinching it up so that the wraps are being tucked in between. We're going to go around that bead nice and close. And I'm putting pressure on the beads themselves, not on the wire, because if you hold on to that wire, you're going to end up bending it. So we don't want to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this wrap. Just goes behind. And then the bottom one goes right in front. Remember, we're going over and behind. All right. Now, I was trying to get sort of an ombre look for this with the beads, but it's not, they got out of order, so we'll just let them be the way that they want to be. I think it's actually a pretty look. So I'm going to go close to the bead and around the top of the base wire. And I'm finger straightening these as I go, trying to keep all of my weaves nice and tight. And then kind of adjusting. Now you can see that your base wire is free floating, so this will twist, which is why it's kind of important to hold on to the beads instead of the wire because you can pull that wire right out. Okay, it's another bead on here. Now 
nice and tight around the bead and over the top. Back out to the side and the bottom. And this is another tip. Uh, you want to follow the pattern all the way through. So if you start with your bottom wire and then do the top wire, you want to continue doing that. I started with the top. And so on every wrap, I'm doing the top first and then the bottom. And that keeps these wraps here consistent. So it's not switching back and forth and looking messy. Of course, you could try that as a different look and it might look interesting, but you'd want to make a pattern out of it. You'd want to be consistent with how often you're switching so that it, it makes sense to your piece. to get some more beads out. Now you can use this idea for earrings as well. You just wouldn't put quite as many beads on there and maybe finish off with another wrapped loop at the bottom so you can maybe hang a dangle or something or you can just wrap it and tuck it behind the earrings so you can't see it anymore. Might actually make some matching earrings go along with this bracelet. We'll see. Now, I have done all I can with the beads that I have, but let's get this other bracelet out. And we need quite a few more. Ooh, I may have given myself a little bit of a shorty there. So we'll make a knot wrapped loop at the end there. It looks like I need about four more beads. Remember, we are going from the top. And if you ever get lost or if you put your work down, the one, the wire group that is on top of everything is the last one that went. So if you see the bottom here is coming up and it's on top. So we know that we stopped with the bottom. So we'll do the top again. And the trick to this wrap is to make sure that when you're wrapping, you're getting your wires nice and close to those beads. So last wrap here. So on this one, I'm going to do one more wrap 
and leave the on this side. And now I'm going to go wrap and wrap on that side. And then for this one, just because it's the very tail end, I'm just going to wrap one more time. Kind of gives it a little bit of a finished look there. Okay, I'm going to just trim off those pieces now. And I'm trimming as close as I can. But kind of leaving a little bit of room so that I can wrap those ends around. And then I'm just taking my pliers and burnishing in those, those ends there so that when you feel around, there's nothing to catch. Okay, now let's go ahead and end this. You know, let's do a pretty big one. Okay, so I basically wrapped it around the, the round nose pliers there. And then I bent the neck a little so I could bring that um, end back into alignment. And I'm just going to snip right next to, so they basically have an open jump ring that I can open if I want to, or close. Okay. Now, um, I do not have a bracelet mandrel, so I'm not able to do this uh, professionally, but kind of find the halfway point on your wrist and then just bend gently. And then you should have something that you can mess with a little bit more, even out those curves. And then we need to make some sort of catch here. So we'll take our 18 gauge, cut off a bit. Straighten it out. Now, I am not very good at making um, closures, or like components. I'm more of an artistic wire wrapper, so I usually tend to buy my components. But I'm going to do a wrap at the end here. So I'm gonna take that. Wrap this. Hold on to the end there. Continue the wrap. And then just squish that down a little. So now we have a wrapped loop at the end there. And then we can make some sort of loop.
All right. So I know this looks odd, but let me cut it and then we'll see. And of course you could probably just buy a hook and loop closure if you wanted to. Okay. Now, this is the wrapped end, so that's going to be the end that this is going to tuck into. And this is the end that I have the open, so we'll open that up. And just thread that on there. Close it up. And now we have a completed bracelet. Well, I hope that this was a fun tutorial for you to watch. Sorry if it was repetitive, if you got to watch the one in Tucson, but um, this is a really fun and easy project. So I hope to see lots of people trying this out and posting your creations in our uh, very important beater group on Facebook. Um, please tag me if you do post something so I can make sure that I can see it and give you props. So thanks again for joining me for Conversations in Wire, and I will see you again. Have a great day. Bye-bye.